I'm joined by Eric Young right now. You know him from his work in the professional wrestling world. You are going to get a chance to know a little bit more about his obsession. In this case, it's a vinyl obsession. He's hosting Access TV's new series, Vinyl Obsession. It's returning for a second season on October 6th. Uh, I'll just jump right into it. Where where did your vinyl obsession start? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I've been obsessed with music my whole life. It's it's a a, a bit of a strange thing, as I I can't. I mean, I clearly can't sing. Um, I can barely speak English. Uh, I can't play an instrument. I mean, I can drum a little bit, but I mean, I don't I'm not trained in any way. Um, I don't know anything about music. I don't know how to write it. I don't know how to read music. Um, but I've been obsessed with it most of my life. I think that comes from my parents being obsessed with it. And uh, it's just been a massive part of my life since I was a, a little kid. And uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago, my wife bought me a record player. Unbeknownst to her, uh, I would lose my mind. And from about that time to today, I have over 2,000. I don't know the exact number, but it's over 2,000 vinyl albums. And it grows not daily at this point, but for sure it grows weekly. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it is an obsession. It's not just a clever name. It was already called that, but I definitely have one, a vinyl obsession. If I had to make you pick, is there like one record where you were like, I need to have it. And then you found it. Cause I know. I... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, for me, it's kind of, that's a moving target. It depends on my mood for wrestling fans. Uh, a strange one that I have that once I heard that it was a thing, I had to have it. There, he, uh, this guy, he's recorded three separate albums and it's sweet daddy. Seeky. He's an old school uh, territory wrestler with, was from Toronto, Canadian based guy. Um, wrestled all over the world was a huge draw um, back in like the 60s and 70s um, wild looking guy black guy with a uh, shaved head with bleached blonde hair uh, the cover of one of his albums he's like wearing his wrestling trunks and wrestling boots and like looks to be like some kind of a poncho and then holding a guitar it's uh it's amazing so one of them it's him covering like really cool classic country songs and the other one are songs that he wrote and recorded himself there's another album his third album um, but it's impossible. I will continue to look, but I don't have that one, but I have the first two. And uh, anytime wrestlers come over, I show them that one. But yeah, the otherwise, like it's it's a moving target. A big one for me is Shulk Silver Chair Frog Stomp for two reasons. It's like one of my favorite albums from when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the band. They're like 13 or 14 years old when they recorded it. I don't know how you're that angry when you're that young, but they were uh, they made some unbelievable rock and roll music and uh, it's the, the original pressing. They've, I don't think they've ever reissued it. And I think they only pressed 15,000 of them. So it's pretty rare. Uh, it was pretty expensive. I don't collect them to sell them or, or make money. I, I don't care about any of that. I just, if I like it, I want to own the physical copy of the music. So it's uh, that's, that's where the obsession comes from. I like the educational aspect of both of these because and I'm glad you brought up Sweet Daddy Seeky because I, I wasn't familiar with him. Like, obviously, you you might be more in tune because you're Canadian, but like, yeah, I've heard, I've heard Bret Hart talk about him more and more over the years about how he should be more prominent. So it's like, yep, something Definitely. like that. And then you saying you're interested in his music, having like pressings of his music. Like, I think you know, there's a, there's a lot of crossover between the the two worlds when you really think about it. Yeah, I think there's always been a massive, you know, like crossover between music. It's like secretly all wrestlers want to be rock stars and a lot of rock stars want to be wrestlers. So there is this really cool, strange crossover and um, getting to work with a bunch of people, uh, different kind of celebrities and huge musicians and their love for pro wrestling kind of manifesting itself and them talking to me about it and I feel like everybody has, you know, some kind of connection to pro wrestling, just like they have some kind of connection to music and uh, whether it's they watch it or their friend watches it, or that was them and their, their grandma or their grandpa or their father thing or mothers, like where they would watch when they were younger. Uh, so finding something like that caught Kat Von D was a big wrestling fan. Uh, Jeff Timmons from 98 degrees because become a pretty good buddy of mine and has come to a couple of our tapings in Vegas, him and his son just love it have kind of, made new wrestling fans out of those two so it's uh it's been a really cool thing man yeah and you know as far as jeff goes like he's friends with jesse goddard's too so like i see their stuff all the time popping up they did like they did a song together and jesse like recorded with him so yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Really jeff is is one of the coolest people i've ever met uh 
I told him to, I, I certainly wasn't a massive fan of their music, respect who they are and, and what they, what they did. And he was very open and honest with his journey uh, into 98 degrees and his musical journey to this point. And it was really cool to learn that. And just a guy that like me is just in love with music uh, of all genres. And that was a, a very eye opening thing. A lot of the people you think, Oh, you know, Dave Mustaine, he's, a slash metal God and, you know, a, a God in the metal world. I mean, literally a God in that world and his, how diverse his music tastes are, you know, like loves Duran Duran and loves David Bowie and like all these bands that, that you just wouldn't guess. And I mean, I guess that's me kind of casting my dispersions and thoughts on, on what he'd like, but yeah, he likes all kinds of different stuff and, and you find it out through the show, which is really cool. Yeah. And you know, I, I think one thing you might appreciate is you you said, like, you're not really, like, I, I think we grew up around the same time. Like, you're not a huge fan of, like, the boy band stuff. But, like, my daughter now, she's asking me about, like, NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys. And I'm, it, it, right. it's new to her. And I guess part of it's because it, it uh, Bye 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 was in Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. So yeah. it's, like, like, what's new to them is, like, they they talk to you, like, oh, do you see this? It's I'm, like, not new to me. <laughs> like. Yeah, music can just transcend time, you know, and, you know, I think I, I think back to when Rock Band came out and like Social Distortion is a band that I've loved since I was like 14 years old and having one of their songs on Rock Band made them prevalent all over again and maybe bigger than they've ever been. And then having, you know, obviously Bye 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 and, and Deadpool and big movies like that, uh, you know, it just it, it just makes um people find that music and it can be timeless Kate Bush from stranger things. So it's, it's really cool to see that. And I'm hoping that people will see this show and discover a new artist, you know, or, or, or through an artist that they already like find new music that they like as well. So it's, it's a, it's a really cool show, man. I'm so proud of it. It's so slick and shot so well. And there's so many talented people working on it. Um, I'm not including me in that. I'm just a music fan. And uh, I think I approach it from fans perspective. And I think people will find it really, really interesting. Yeah. And some of some of the other names, like you mentioned Dave Mustaine, but uh, Melissa Joan Hart, Mike Dern, yeah. Day, Steve Vai, like Debbie Gibson, like there, there's a very eclectic mix of people that they got on here. And they're, they're all experts in their own field. So I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. Out. Yeah, expert musicians, you know, most of them. Um, a big one for me was Chris Shiflett. He's the lead guitar player from Foo Fighters. Um, there were, I went through a, pr a point in my life where I listened predominantly to punk music. And he was in a band called No Use for a Name. And, like, they were a CD that I I wore it out listening to it. And then he was in, a, like, a super punk band called Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. And they do, like, 50, 60, 70 covers, but punk style music. Somewhere over the rainbow and all kinds of, like, wild stuff, but punk versions of it. And he's also a guitar player in that band. So he's been part of my life for 30-plus years. And getting to hang out with him, he's such a cool guy and his influences in music and how country music influenced him and Merle Haggard and, you know, guys like that um, influenced his guitar playing and his and his love of music. And uh, it was just it was so cool, man. I, I was kind of geeking out and I had to share with him that I've been a fan since then. And, and it was cool to share that time with him. And, you know, Gavin Rosdale from Bush was another person Like I I loved Bush in high school and have memories of listening to them and watching them on uh, uh when mtv actually played music and the, it was the uh spring break we're in cancun and it's pouring rain he's playing electric guitar and to me it was like this iconic rock and roll moment i got to sit there and chit chat to him about music and more importantly about reggae music we both love reggae music so we got to talk about that quite a bit uh, i i keep on thinking of the list i'm like oh how could i leave them off but like it, it really is that loaded so Coming coming up Sunday October six, people check it out. There's a lot, there's a lot of people on here. Uh, I mentioned the the crossover, um, and I wanted I wanted to ask you this because people will notice that you have a new mask. Maybe it's not new, uh, but it, it's been around for a few months. The the Doctor Doom style mask. Uh, yeah. What what was your reaction to Robert Downey Jr. coming back? I mean, are, are you an He's MCU incredible. guy or are you a strictly comics guy? Uh, so, I mean, it, it's cool for me because I've been a comic guy. I mean, I've gotten rid of them in the, in the last couple of years because I'm running out of space in my house. And my wife was like, you can't collect comics mm -hmm. and vinyl music. Like, we're just running out of space. So I sold a lot of my long boxes. But I've been a diehard comic fan for 30 plus years. And I had 
thousands and thousands of trades. And, and I've, I've known that this is an amazing median for over 30 years. And it's really cool to see the whole rest of the world being like, oh man, the comics are amazing and the characters are amazing and the stories are, are amazing. It's real life human emotion put into these kind of wild over the top, not realistic characters. And Robert Downey Jr., you know, changed the game, changed his life for the better and became one of the most recognizable people by playing Iron Man. And uh, now he's Dr. Doom. And I think the comic nerd of me is like, oh, he can't be both. Um, the person that understands that they're trying to make money and they want people to watch the, mo the movies and putting Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom is amazing. I'm, I haven't gotten a cease and desist for wearing the mask yet, but uh, I'm kind of waiting on it, you know, and now it's kind of popular again. Uh, but the Dr. Doom mask is awesome. And it was given to me by a really good friend of mine. Robert um, was the, one of the head writers for TNA and now has moved over to AEW, but he gave it to me to use. And, and I just, I love the mask and how it looks and how it looks on TV. And it also is the connection of being a comic nerd. I've got a Casey Jones mask. I've worn different hockey masks because hockey is such a big part of my life. I've had a Gary Cheever's match, but I think the Iron Man one is my favorite, but carrying it through the airport can be a bit of an adventure. It's metal. And they're always like, what is this? And they have to pull it out and look at it. And it's uh, it can be a wild ride at the airport sometimes. I, I know when the announcement happened, I was like, whoa, that's awesome. He's back. And then I'm like, how's it happen? And I'm like going between those two sides. So me too. Like, yeah, you me know, too. There's, there's money involved, but I'm just excited to see how they pull it off at this point. Yeah, me too. I guess, you know, they've got the, you know, the messed up timeline and the, uh, all of that stuff. So they'll figure it out. They're smarter than me. And Robert Downey Jr. rules. He's one of my favorite actors of all time, has been one of my favorite actors since he played Charlie Chaplin in the biography, by, uh, autobiographical movie, uh, Chaplin. And uh, I don't know. It's just cool to see the resurgence. And it's a cool story to see him. Like he was, you know, at, at rock bottom. And, and fixed his life and fixed his career. And it, it, it's really cool to see. It's never too late. And second chances can be beautiful. And, and, and that's got nothing to do with this interview, but I, I think it's amazing. You know, it's just, it's just a really cool thing to see. And I'm, I'm, I'm open to him being Dr. Doom. Not that he cares or they care, but I'm, I'm open to it. Hey, it, it, it's, I, I appreciate it. I, I am excited like you just to kind of see how it happens. And, you know, who, who doesn't appreciate a feel good story? Right? That's right. That's right. I have a couple more questions for you. Uh, sure, man. First one is, I usually do a watch list feature. So I wanted to see if I could get your favorite match since you've been back in TNA, whether that's physically you returning to the, the company yeah. and or since the company actually rebranded, however you want to interpret that. Yeah, I, I think for me, uh, one of my the really special ones is me and Moose. Um uh, yeah, in in Canada, it's about 15 minutes from where I grew up. So I had a lot of friends and family there for the world title, obviously coming up short, uh, but sharing the ring with a, a guy like him. I mean, he's, I said in promos leading up to it, I think when it's all said and done, he's going to be one of the best to ever do it. Um, a bit of a savant when it comes to it and, and just understands it on a level and is obviously physically imposing and like one of the best athletes to ever do this. And that's a long list. You know, it's a really long list. That's probably my favorite one since coming back. Um, and what, what I'm doing right now, this kind of team up thing with, uh, with Macklin, um, you know, obviously, you know, our, our last match on, uh, was on the lead up to the pay-per-view uh, for emergence. And uh, we wrestled Hammerstone and Jake and coming up short again, but there's something really special uh, happening with me and him and also happening with Jake and Hammerstone. So it's uh, the tag division is really strong right now. Having the Hardys there kind of leading the charge is, uh, is energized that whole thing, energized TNA in general. Um, but yeah, there's something really special. I've been friends with Steve Macklin for Going on, I mean, I guess that we first met in 2016 when I started NXT, and we've been pretty close uh, friends and, and talk all the time. So there's something really special happening there, and uh, I can't wait to see where it leads. There's a lot of things that come up when, you, you know, you hear Eric Young, you think Showtime or your time with ODB, NXT, all different yeah. stuff. Is there something you want people to talk about more that you feel deserves more attention? Um, you know, just kind of what's happening at TNA right now. And, and I'm being part of that. And that's, uh, it, it'll sound cliche, but it's truth. It, this is my home. I could work, you know, I, I believe I could work wherever I want. Mm -hmm. And 
I have lots of reasons to say that that I don't I'm not going to go into, but it's true. I I I choose to work there. I I choose to, I chose to leave WWE. I chose to come back to TNA. Um, and I chose to stay there one time. There's definitely times when I could have left. Um, part of that is, is, you know, there's something nostalgic about it for me. Also, it's something that I pour my soul into my blood and my sweat and my tears have been dumped in that ring. And it's important for me to see that company survive and the company to be there for other people as they come in. It, it kind of not saved my life, but saved me from wrestling obscurity when they hired me in the first place. So it's, um, it will always be a special place to me. It will always be my home and seeing it thrive right now, like pay-per-views being up and digital impressions being up and subscriptions to the app, which is the best wrestling app in the world. That's going to be bias coming from me, but it's the truth. Um, you know, it just, it, the crowds have been three, four times the size that we're used to. And I don't think there's a person walking away from any of these shows being like, I wish it was this. I wish there was that. And they could have done this. They could have done that. I think sometimes they're thinking that, but on the whole people that are fans of the show and people that watch it and consume it are realizing there's something really special going on. And to be part of that is, is an irreplaceable drug, man. And I, I am just, I couldn't be happier to be where I am right now. And it's cool to see people talking about it online. Like I, I don't really like getting in the attendance stuff and I sure. prefer to stay away from that, but yeah. at least on this side of it, it's cool to see like people are like, wow, look at what the, you know, look at what TNA is doing instead of the other stuff that usually muddies the waters. Like uh, I just saw something before we, we jumped on somebody quoted like Lance storm saying like, here, here, here's the crowd. We did it. Whatever. Uh, I'm blanking Louisville. Right, you were just in Louisville. Louisville was the last day. We just came from San Antonio as well. They're That's both, okay. yeah. So Louisville or San Antonio, but it, it was quoting Lance Storm saying, "Like, look at the numbers we're doing. Like, we're we're doing very well. Like, positive comments overall on on social media yeah. too. Like, it's none of that, which is rare. Yeah, it, it it you know there was there was a certain narrative about the company. I would say maybe like 2016 or 17, and sure, I feel like that's kind of gone away, and people are starting to see what. TNA has to offer and uh, not, not to go on too long, but I I'm usually the one that's saying TNA like week to week. It's the most consistent show every week. Like there, you know, not too many uh, plot hole threads and stuff like that. Like it's a complete show. So it, it's yeah. cool to see people, you know, starting to catch on more and more and hopefully, you know, hopefully that continues the way it is. Yeah, I, I would imagine it will. I mean, there's real momentum right now. That's exciting for people, especially people. There's a whole group of people that have been very loyal fans that have been loyal to this from 2017 to now, you know, and they've watched it and they've bought tickets to shows and paid for pay-per-views. And I can tell you that almost to a man in the locker room, that's important to us. It's something that we realize. And, you know, you saying that, and uh, lots of people that consume it are saying the same thing. It's a super consistent show in a world that is just not consistent. It's written for pro wrestling fans by pro wrestling fans. That's what it is. You know, we're not, we're not trying to be a television show. We're trying to be a professional wrestling show. And I think that shows. And it's the ultimate variety show. There's a little something for everybody. There's spooky stuff and there's funny stuff. And you got, you know, Mike Bailey and, you know, guys in the X Division having these insane matches, great stories, you know, great main events, superstars like Nick Nemeth and the Hardys that can work wherever they want to. And they chose to come to TNA because they see it too, you know, and, and other people over time have done that. And it's happening in front of everyone's eyes. Those guys could work wherever they want. They choose to work there because it's a special thing going on right now. So it, it's cool that the word's getting out on that. Like you said, it's never going to be completely positive because that's the world we live in. Um, but it's mostly positive. And I, I just say to people, just stop worrying about things that don't concern you on numbers and you know, how many people are watching the shows and the, the numbers on, on TV, look, TV in general is a fickle thing and numbers go up and numbers go down and TV in general right now is plummeting, right? The, 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 the ratings of all things, except for the NFL are falling off the map. And um, 
That's sad to see, but I think everyone knows this was coming. People are starting to stream. People don't pay for cable anymore. So those numbers are just naturally going to fall. So I would say if you're a wrestling fan, we'll let the people <laughs> that know what they're doing worry about that. Just watch it and enjoy it or don't watch it. You know, it, it's I just think people need to not concern themselves with that stuff and just enjoy it. That's what it's there for. That's what I did when I was a wrestling fan. That's what I still do today. I try not to concern myself with the other stuff because none of that should affect you as a wrestling fan. Should just enjoy what you enjoy, and that's it. Watch it all. That's what I do. You can, you can watch Eric uh, Thursdays on TNA Impact and Vinyl Obsession Sunday, October sixth at ten thirty p.m. on Access. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, cheers, man. Thanks, Bill.